Roger up and get outside. Good coolers, better coolers, the best roto molded coolers. But before we delve into how I handpick the cream of the crop and which ones deserve a slice of your paycheck, let's define what I mean by roto molded coolers. Roto molding or rotational plastic molding is a manufacturing technique that's used to make big plastic objects like kayaks, your big garbage can outside, or high end coolers like a Yeti. But it can also be used to make ping pong balls or pink flamingos. <laughs> I, I wonder when Yeti's gonna start selling a $500 flamingo. Roto molding involves putting granular resin into a closed mold that is then heated up while being rotated on a big machine that looks like one of those janky carnival rides I try to avoid so that I don't lose my lunch. It keeps rotating while it cools and the result is a foxy one piece polyethylene bombshell as hollow as my commitment to my new year's fitness resolution. And it boasts identical wall thickness throughout. This rugged cooler exoskeleton is then injected with dense foam insulation that'll keep your brewskis frosty even when it's crazy hot outside. Unlike injection or blow molding that use pressure to force molten plastic into a cooler shaped mold, roto molding can deliver greater durability, albeit at a cost. Enough about that. Let's talk about what makes these the best roto molded coolers money can buy. I researched coolers like crazy before eventually buying a pile of them to test. Now I know I didn't catch every brand and there are plenty of other good ones out there that I hope to review in the future. But for now, here are 15 coolers that I have personally vetted, tested, and used on actual camping trips and other outings. These are all medium to large size roto molded coolers and most are available in multiple sizes and colors. I don't dive deep into size and capacity here simply because in my opinion, that sort of is what it is, and while I could pour a quart of water in there or fill it chock full with soda cans to see if it is as advertised, that doesn't reflect how I actually use a cooler. So this review will not be about measuring stuff, it's more about how well these coolers do what they do in the real world. In order to rank these coolers as good, better, or best, I looked at five criteria. Ice retention, build quality, durability, features with benefits, and then warranty and customer service. Each cooler was given a score for each criteria and then the average value of all of them combined makes up the Outdoor Empire score and that's how we remain as objective as possible in rating these. Then of course there's price which matters a whole lot with these puppies. As of the time of filming, here's the price breakdown for the coolers we tested. MSRP represents of course the suggested retail price from the manufacturer. The price range represents the price spread that I could find with some simple googling. And then the price per quart is based on the cooler's capacity as advertised by its manufacturer. As you can see, wheeled coolers and Yetis are among the most expensive, but adjusting the price for volume paints a slightly different picture. At four bucks per quart, the Arctic and the Amazon specials offer great bang for your buck. And if you're paying more than $5 per quart, there ought to be a good reason for doing so. But 10 bucks a quart for the overhyped Rover Roller 45 and Pelican Elite 45 QW that ranked at the bottom of our best wheeled coolers list? Well, that's just highway robbery. Ice retention is obviously the most important function of a cooler and a high-end roto molded cooler should excel at it. In order to test all these coolers for that, I actually did an ice retention challenge with these and about 15 other coolers, and I filled them all about 80% full of ice. I left them out in my backyard until the ice was gone in all of them. Each day, I would take four data points. I would see, is there ice present in the cooler? Is there enough ice to hold up the cans of soda I put in there? What's the temperature of the hot dog I put in there? And then what's the temperature of the cooler inside? and it had to meet a minimum, and it was a pass-fail, so each cooler could get one point for each of the four criteria per day. Once a cooler had zero points in a day, they were out of the game. And it was pretty interesting to see because I was looking at all different types and sizes and brands of coolers, so I learned something from them. This wasn't a super scientific lab test. It was more of a real-world test where I use them like I would when I'm actually camping. Be sure and watch that video because all these coolers were in it. Winners were the Orion and Cabela's Polar Cap, which went for nine full days in the heat of summer. The Orca was right behind them at eight days, and most of the rest of these went for a full week, with only a few of the smaller ones coming up a day short of that. Though I suspect the larger capacity versions in those laggard brands may have matched those week longers. The build quality was excellent on most of these coolers. Given their premium price tag, most manufacturers pay pretty close attention to the fit and finish of them. But there are a handful that aren't quite as pretty as the rest. 
the fit and finish just doesn't feel quite as nice as some of the others. You look closely and there's kind of these rough edges. The plastic doesn't feel quite the same, the same or durable as some of the other ones. I've read lots of reviews online of people having issues with warped lids. So it seems like maybe they just have some quality assurance or they use a little bit cheaper, different products. And these latches too have been reported to break pretty easily. A couple of things I noticed directly is that one, this drain plug, you really have to crank on it to get it to not leak. The other thing I had happen is that this gasket, well, it seems to do a good job of keeping air out. If there's a lot of water in there, it just sloshes like crazy and it splashes out. But not a big deal again, but that's something I noticed. Then right here I have the angle. Now my gripes are pretty minor with this and these guys have a good reputation, so take that for what it's worth. But I just noticed the plastic seems to be a little softer than others. I mean, this fell off the truck, but it, it scuffs up pretty easy. And again, that drain plug has to be cranked in super duper tight. Next one is this guide gear from Sportsman's Guide. Now there's nothing really wrong with it. It's pretty darn good and it's made in the USA, which is cool. But again, it just doesn't have this, the cleanest fit and finish. Has some latches that are okay. And there's some QA, QC problems. I mean, they forgot to put the sticker on mine. So kind of a similar comment on the X-Spec. There's really nothing wrong with this one. It just doesn't have the cleanest and smoothest finishings on it, but it works great and it's a decent buy. This Mono Price Pure Outdoor Emperor 50, it's quite a mouthful of a name. It's actually got decent wheels on it, but all the components are kind of just simple, basic, cheap components. These T-latches are pretty roughly hewn and thinner than most. The Coho is the one that everybody sees at Costco. I mean, that's where I bought it. And it's, again, it's pretty decent, but just not the smoothest and cleanest lines and edges. You know, I think they're just cranking them out. These Cohos also have lots of kind of quality assurance or quality problems. I've seen a lot of reviews online where people got them with warped lids when they were brand new. So, you know, you kind of get what you pay for, but at least you got Costco with great customer service. So, you know, they're going to give you your money back if you want it. Those wheels are built like the red wagon. Even these little caps look just like the wagon wheels. The axle is exposed, so it'll get a bunch of gunk in there. And frankly, this straight up drags on the dirt. And look, I dropped it once. And now that wheel doesn't even want to turn. So some quality issues there, Pelican. And finally, we have the Rover Roller 45. Now I think the Rover Roller 60 would be a better option. Every time I go to pull up that handle, you have to pull it up and then look at that. You have to jerk on it like crazy and that shouldn't happen. Then look how flimsy it is. Everything else on that cooler is all right, but that handle is a deal breaker. Durability. Whoops. Now it's hard to objectively determine the relative durability of a group of coolers, but that was fun. And so was this. Roto-molded as they are, most of these coolers are pretty darn tough but they did lose a point if the company didn't put in the extra money and effort to get them bear resistance certified by the interagency grizzly bear committee. To get this, a cooler has to actually survive an hour in a pen with real grizzly bears trying to claw it open. I visited a place where they do this near Yellowstone National Park with my family on a vacation last year, and I took these photos. It's the real deal. When you're paying for a premium cooler, I think it really ought to have passed this test. It doesn't guarantee that a bear won't ever get into your ice chest, but it gives you some peace of mind that you've done something to avoid being that guy, that reason that a wild bear has to be euthanized. If people weren't careless with their food when camping in known bear habitat, a lot fewer bears would die. End of soapbox. Features are like friends. It's nice to have a few, but friends with benefits are what's worth paying for. But what do I know? I married my only friend with benefits and she's worth it. Some of these have things like a ruler on the lid so you can measure stuff like fish or your foot. Bottle openers are nearly a staple on coolers nowadays, and some come with enough for a frat party, while others are pretentiously absent of these unless you fork out more dollar bills to accessorize. There are some weird features with no practical use case, like the compass on the X-Spec. But a freezer-style gasket, tie-down slots, a hole for a padlock, and grippy feet, on the other hand, are practical staples that you should expect on a roto-molded cooler. Although I do kind of like the hard plastic sliders on the bottom of the Canyon Outfitter in place of grippy feet, it makes it a whole lot easier to get in and out of the truck. Speaking of liking stuff, if you're gleaning something useful from this video, 
consider nudging that like button down below. I sure appreciate it. Drain plugs are a must with these heavy beasts since tipping them over requires effort I'd rather not exert. And my preference is for a drain hole with a male drain plug insert as opposed to a plastic threaded drain that sticks out because that's liable to get banged up and rendered dysfunctional. Bonus points if the cap or the insert is tethered. Be sure and pay attention though, you almost need vice grips to tighten some of these drains enough to have them not leak. That was the case for me on the Cabela's and the angle, though I do really like that flow rate adjusting drain on the angle. Handles are important and should make it easier to lift and carry whether you're by yourself or with that friend with benefits. All right, so after handling so many coolers, I've developed a preference when it comes to handles. Now for a typical roto molded cooler without wheels, I really like a solid handle with a decent grip, like this one here, the Orion has a nice rubbery grip and a pretty sturdy nylon rope. That rope's fine, it could be a cable or something, but I don't really like the cable style. I do like the rope. That's a great handle. Even on this Coho, it's a pretty decent handle, though it doesn't feel quite as stout. Same with the Arctic, that one doesn't feel as stout, but it's still comfortable, although I think that foam will break down over time. The Canyon has a rigid plastic handle, that's okay but not the best. Cabela's did something clever where they included a handle, but they always also have these huge grab handles, which are actually nice to transport and move around, except that it just makes it that much more bulky and wide and hard to put places. But it's nice that it has these, I guess, and they do stow back so they're not flopping around. That's kind of clever. You know, Yeti, this is kind of the standard Yeti's typical handles that most people followed. But Cordova took a different take, and I love these handles. Now this is an aluminum one that pivots, so if you're carrying this too, that's great but when you just need to lift it into the back of the truck, it's got that as well. Super sturdy, it's not flopping around, making noise. The one problem with some of these floppy handles is that if you're two short people, it can be really hard to carry them. You might have to like hold that up and then that's a lot of weight, especially if you got one of these heavy rotomolded coolers with 50 pounds of ice in there. I mean, you could be carrying 80, 90 pounds between the two of you. So sometimes these are just too long for some people. So I like that rigid handle like on that Cordova. Now, if it's a wheeled cooler, my preference changes. I don't want the floppy handle like on this one. It's great. And most of them don't have it. The Yeti Tundra Hall is a great example. It's got good grab holds there for lifting into the back of the truck and stuff. Since otherwise you're going to be towing it around, it doesn't have those floppy handles. And that's good with me. You got the Pelican and again, kind of like the Cabela's, it's just a little overbuilt. All those things that stick out just add more bulk make it harder to put in your truck or your car, just more bulky all around. And I've got thoughts on latches. You look at the Yetis, that's kind of the standard T-handle version, and theirs is pretty smooth. It's easy enough to open and holds down pretty well. There's some different takes on that. A little bit more of a triangular shape like on the, the Coho here. The Orca, while well, I love this guy, man, these are the hardest to open. My kids can't do it. You just have to really pull. But they're stout and definitely well-branded. Looks pretty cool. Cordova. Look at this ingenuity. They just flip that T-handle upside down and you know what? I really like it. And the reason I like it is because when that when the lid's open and you go to close, it's never getting caught in the way. So very good, good feature there. You've got the Cabela's here that has this. I really don't like this style. They did put a bottle opener in there. That's kind of clever, but I don't like that. It's, they're just harder to get in and out, I find. But some that I like the most are the Angle and the Canyon. They're both very similar. And these are easy for everyone to do, kids included. They latch up, they pull down, it gets nice and closed. Closed really well and seals that air gap. Looks very similarly, very easy to maneuver. I also like the Orion. These are kind of like, these are super sturdy. Aluminum there, come down, and there they're locked in place. And then of course you got Pelican, who's the only one who made these kind of mechanical latches, which are fine, but that's, yeah, they're fine. But your, my wife has actually caught her finger in there, somehow thought it was hard to do. So, um, you know, not for everyone. I, and I don't really like these Rover ones, having that deal, I, I just don't really like that. I think the T-handles are easier to maneuver. And then there are a few oddball features with questionable and sometimes useful benefits. And the Rover is probably the king of that. They got this little bin, this, this props up, but it's kind of a bin you can put your dry stuff, your chips and your bread and stuff like that. Nice. There's this, which is for a bicycle attachment. So you can pull it on your bike. It's got the pneumatic wheels, which are really smooth and really nice. However, they are a little higher maintenance than a never, never flat wheel. 
inside it also has that bin that's kind of a nice feature there are some that i think aren't really worth their weight and that's stuff like oh look now you know exactly where to put your soda can because you can just follow the prints really i mean who's gonna do that <laughs> silly the orca has this really nice net on the back now that is pretty useful you could put plates and cutlery in there if you're going for a picnic or you could have some uh, fishing tackle or gear in there it's just it's a, a useful thing that comes included so that's pretty sweet the cabela's has this interesting equalizer button so you push on that to kind of release pressure now i think that is kind of useful because a lot of times when i'm going from low elevation down here in the valley where i live up to high elevations you get a lot of pressure in there and it makes it really hope, hard to open that lid or when it's really hot outside that can happen um, anytime the pressure changes outside of the cooler from inside sometimes it's really hard to open that makes it a little easier so that's kind of a clever feature and then perhaps one of my favorites is this cordova one they put this lip on the lid and at first i thought that's it's not super comfortable when you sit on it but it's not that big of a deal but i think it also um, makes the lid a little more rigid so it's probably less prone to warping because of that um, and uh, it makes it nice for keeping uh, spills off of whatever you're set up on the deck or whatever and then the lid locks look at that a halfway open lock that's the only one that does that to my recollection and uh, that's kind of nice so sometimes you don't want to you want to just hold itself open and not fall on your hand or on the kids while you're digging stuff out perhaps one more distinguishing factor is available accessories some come with a thing or two why thank you yeti the price tag makes so much more sense now and some like yeti or ryan Orca, Canyon, Engel, Rover, and Cordova offer a whole lot of add-on accessories so you can trick out your ride to your heart's content. When it comes to customer service and warranty, there are those that go above and beyond and there are those that sell it cheap and say, see you later. I personally contacted every one of these cooler companies' customer service departments with the exact same inquiry. I recorded when I sent the message, when I heard back, and how helpful the response was. Almost everybody provided satisfactory customer service, except for Pelican, Rover, Monoprice, and Coho, who never responded whatsoever. Others, like Orion and Cordova, were not only super quick to respond, but they were super helpful too. They answered my question and then offered even more insight in a very human-to-human -human way that you don't really feel in some of these automated systems. Orca, Canyon, and Pelican stand out with their lifetime warranties. Orion and Engel tie for second with a respectable 10 years. The bar does seem to be set at a five year warranty in this product category, so anything with less than that seems inadequate. All right, so what's the verdict? Let's get to it. Taking into account our ranking system and the aforementioned factors, these are good rotomolded coolers. We have the Guide Gear from Sportsman's Guide, a Pelican Elite, a Pure Outdoor Amazon Special Type, the Coho, which you can get at Costco, and the Rover Roller 45. Now each of them have their pros and cons. These less expensive ones offer great bang for your buck. So if you just want something cheap that holds ice well, the Pure Outdoor, the Coho, and the Guide Gear are fantastic for that. The Rover Roller 45, I would leave to the wayside because I just cannot stand that handle. If they fix that, maybe it'd be okay. And the Pelican, I think, would be better off without those wheels. These are better roto-molded coolers. I think they are worth the price they cost. They offer something more, they have great ice retention, they each have some features and have cleaner fit and finish than the good ones. Overall, I think they offer a lot of value. The Cordova Base Camp is a fantastic option. It's got some unique elements to it. I like those inverse handles, for example. The Canyon Outfitter is great for the form factor. It's just easy to put in and out of vehicles. It's lighter weight. The Yeti Tundra, of course, is a classic, and you're going to find parts for that, and, you're, and no one's going to say boo about getting a Yeti. Well, that's not true. There are some Yeti haters out there. The x -Bec from Amazon is an excellent buy. No warranty, really, so that's a bummer, but it's a decent deal, and it's a decent quality cooler. The Arctic, of course, is probably one of the best bang for your buck in terms of capacity and ice retention and all those things. The Angle is really popular among anglers. It's got that grippy top that's nice to stand on or sit on, and I like the latches a lot. And then the Cabela's won in our ice retention challenge, so you can't complain about that. However, it has some fit and finish things that aren't super nice. 
And we have finally arrived at the best roto-molded coolers where my unprofessional opinion is that the Orion Core 65 is the best overall. Even though we make absolutely no money if you use the discount code they gave to us to pass on to you, which you can find in the description below, I was hard pressed to find a reason not to crown the Orion as our top choice. Orion coolers are made by Jackson Kayak, a cool family-run business out of Tennessee that made a name for themselves rotomolding whitewater kayaks for amphibious nut jobs. They make these eclectic rotomolded coolers right here in the USA, which can't be said for every big dog we looked at. But the fact is, it just performs amazingly well with top tier ice retention and build quality, best in class customer service, and a well appreciated 10 year warranty to boot. It has enough accessory options to make any angler go gaga, and you can even add a clever wheel kit to make it as portable as they come. I personally like the slightly more square shape that makes it easy to pack and stable to stand on while casting a fishing line or saving kitties from a tree. However, if I could nitpick, I would point out that the drain plug is underwhelming and the lid lacks a recess to grab onto when opening. This just means you'll either blurt out foreign profanities as your fingernail is wrongfully extracted, or you'll capitulate and pull up on the latch instead, which by the way, will probably prevent the lid from closing completely when you try to shut it. If only the latches were on the body instead of the lid, hmm. But none of these three annoyances are deal breakers, and at $335, I do believe this ice box to be worth it, which I can't say for a similarly priced visit to your dentist who insists on eating cash for breakfast. Runner-up goes to the Orca, which is as cool as a cucumber with its rugged good looks and lifetime warranty. While it lacks some frills and its latches are harder to pull than a mule on a Monday morning, this cooler sure knows how to hold its chill. It really nails the fundamentals as was demonstrated in our ice retention challenge. If you want to learn more about the best roto molded cooler with wheels, you really ought to watch this video next on the best wheeled coolers. Spoiler alert, it's the Yeti Tundra Hall. Rankings and links to all of these coolers can be found in the description below and in the detailed review on our website. I guess with that coho, you do kind of get what you pay for. Granted, it was higher than some of these others, but that took a pretty good fall.